welcome back to another tutorial today we are working on the fourth part of our seven part rainbow chakra series and today we are working with green i'm really excited because i haven't worked a ton with all greens so i'm really excited to see how this turns out the colors are pretty vibrant i think it will be great so yeah i'm excited um, I'm going to just quickly go through tools and then guide marks and if you guys have been following the series you've probably seen how to do this before. Um, all the tools and everything's pretty much the same so feel free to skip ahead but I want each video to be complete on its own so I'm just going to go through the whole process for each video. So we'll just go through tools. I'm going to be painting on this 10 inch wood canvas that I got from Michaels. I will link this in the description of the video. And then all other tools can be found in my Amazon shop. And I will also link that in the description below. Or that can be found by going to my website, which is thoughtfuldots.com. And then click on the tools I use tab. And that will take you to my Amazon shop where you can shop the tools directly. Okay, so I will be drawing on, I'm just gonna go through the tools real quick. I'm going to be drawing on the guide marks using these Brussarth white charcoal pencils and a 16 point mandala stencil. I will also be using a compass to draw those on. I will be using brushes. This is a US art supply brush set. We have some long bristles shorter bristles, <laughs> uh, but feel free to use whatever brushes that you have. I'll be using this nail stylus tool set and I will leave a link in the description of the video for the size chart for my specific set and you can use that to convert to whatever set you are using. And then I'll be using these dotting rods by Happy Dotting Company. And they have the millimeter size right on the handle, which makes it super easy for you guys to follow along. Even if you don't have this specific set, you can use the millimeter size to convert to whatever dotting rod set that you have. And we will be using some mirrors. My designs are not pre-planned, so I'm not sure which ones we'll be using yet, but I typically use the diamond and square. So I got this little container at Michael's and then filled it with my mirrors that I bought from Amazon. So if you do not have mirrors, you can, instead of using the mirror, because we're gonna be outlining them, but instead of using the mirror in the pattern, you can just use a paintbrush to draw the diamond shape. And these are about an inch long and half inch wide. And then same for triangle. If you don't have the triangle mirrors, you can just draw the triangle shape. Let me measure these. I don't even know if we'll be using these, but I think these are about a half, no half inch so there are those and then for colors so I have jewel green festive green sour apple jadeite glass and flash art parrot green metallic So I really love this jewel green, but if you look at it compared to say festive green, it has more of like a teal color, which I actually like. And that's what I wanted to add to this. I might add a little bit of festive green in here to make it a little bit more green, but we will see. And then I was thinking of accent colors. Oh, I don't know if gold would Gold would look good. Or white. 
but this is a pretty light, so it, we could use that instead of white. Gold would look good. I'm just not quite sure yet, so we may or may not be using Deco Art Glorious Gold. That's kind of my go-to gold. So those are the colors that I have, and I did paint the base black already using Folk Art Multi-Surface Satin in pure black. So that's it as far as tools. We can go ahead and get started drawing our guide marks. I'm just going to find the center real quick. I'm just taking my ruler measuring 10, which is the length of the board, and then I'm just measuring half. And then I'm going to do that for each direction. So I'm marking five, and I'm just flipping it each direction. So that one hit about three times, so I'm going to just work with that one. And that's a guesstimate. And then I'm just going to take a compass and put it over our guesstimate. And then I'm pulling it all the way to the outer edge. And then I'm flipping it around, making sure that it's landing at about the same place on each direction and then just making the little adjustment where necessary so that is a pretty good center so i'm just marking that it's pretty much where that's at and then I'm just going to pop this on. Okay, and for the square shape, you wanna make sure that you have a guide mark going um, north, south, east, west, and then we wanna make sure that those corners are lined up. So that just keeps our pattern in a nice grid. So I am just putting this over the center, making sure everything looks nice and lined up. And then I don't know where, oh, it's hiding. Taking that charcoal pencil, I'm just going to hold this down and start marking our 16 vertical guide marks. Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this long ruler and this pencil is sharper. I'm gonna use this one. And we are just going to extend these lines all the way to the edge. We just want to just make sure that these are going through the corners. It doesn't have to be exactly, but through the middle of the corners. I just like to blow off any residue. 
so that it's not smearing. Okay, so now we have our vertical guide marks. So now we're gonna do our circular guide marks. Let's just pop this back over the center. I'm just gonna draw out one set of circular guide marks. These are about tiny, tiny bit bigger than one centimeter. So if you need to measure them out instead of using the stencil, I'm just gonna add slightly bigger than one centimeter. Just added a couple extra to bring us out to the edge there. And then I'm just putting my pencil. So I'm just putting it on the first line and then extending that circle. I have a lazy Susan underneath here that makes it really easy to spin. Now we're just going on the second line. Oops. And I like to poke ooh, a hole in that center. I like to really push down so that this is less likely to be, to slip off the center. And I'm just gonna add one more, almost to the very edge. Okay, so there we have our guide marks and we are ready to go. I just need a paint palette. I'm gonna be using just one of these palettes. Um, I'm just gonna pick this out. I don't know if that one, yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna mix the colors real quick. to grab some more festive green. So I'm gonna start with jewel green. That really is such a beautiful green. And then festive green.
and sour apple. Jadeite glass. This is a new one, so. Let me get the plastic off and also just make sure that it's shaken up. Okay, let's take a look at these. So I'm trying to decide if I, I'll see what it looks like. I'm just gonna add a little bit of festive green to that jewel green and just see how that looks. It just has a very um, teal tone, but I kind of like that. So I just added a little bit of festive green to it. So these are the colors we'll be using. Um, I really can't decide if I want to use gold or not. Would look pretty. And I do need an accent color because we're not using white. So yeah, maybe I'll just go for the gold. Can't really go wrong with gold. So for the center dot, I'm going to start with the flash green. If you don't have flash green, you can just use green metallic or any other color in this palette. And I just need to check the consistency of this. It's a little bit thick. So I'm going to add some Liquitex Fluid Medium to just thin it out a little bit. Especially for that middle center dot, you want to make sure we have a nice fluid consistency. So I just added that fluid medium to my jar and I'm just kind of mixing the top layer. And then I'm going to grab the largest dotting rod I have is five, 15 and a half. And I get a lot of paint, especially for that center dot, you want a lot of paint. It's basically dripping off the bottom. Pretty good dot, you can see it has some ripples, so we just need more paint. And then I'm gonna take a stylus tool and just kind of smooth that out. I'm gonna use the large end of the blue tool and just And just kind of pop those bubbles that are in there. Okay, we have our center dot, nice and vibrant green. Now we're gonna start our row of dots and I'm going to kind of do the gradient. So I'm gonna start light and go to the darker color. I'm going to start with the larger end of the yellow tool and the lightest green color. I'm 
And we are just gonna start our first row. I don't count these dots, I'm just trying to make them all the same size. Going all around the large green dot. And if your dots are progressively getting bigger, just wipe your tool off and start fresh. But our main focus is trying to get them all the same size and equal spacing. And then we just want to get them right up against that center green dot. But without touching it so that the paint doesn't run. So I'm just kind of eyeballing about how many I can fit there. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger and then see if I can just fit two. All right. Now I'm going up in size to the large end of the white tool. Um, these ones are a little bit gappy here. So instead of going in between each dot from the previous row, I'm just gonna start a new row. So I'm gonna use the large end of the white tool and the um, sour apple, sour apple. And I'm just gonna do larger dots and I'm just gonna start a new row. And again, I'm just going to do my best to make these the same size and try to have good spacing. So I jumped up significantly in size, so you could do these smaller if you want. I want them just a little bit bigger for this design. So as we get towards the end here, I think I'm going to try to squeeze three. That is a tight fit, so I don't know. Let's see. So I just squeezed this smaller one in here. So it works fine. Next, we are going to go up in size to the large end of the blue tool, and I'm going to use the festive green. And we can, I know the spacing is a little off here, but I'm going to try. Sometimes I try to go in between each dot from the previous row and then if it doesn't work, then it's fine. We just kind of go with the flow and see what works. So I'm starting off in between each dot from the previous row using the large end of the blue tool and the festive green. I just do these little tapping motions to unload a little bit more paint. So if you dot and it's not quite as big as you want, you can tap and it will make them bigger.
Okay, so that worked out pretty well. And now we're gonna do our last row. And my tool has a bunch of paint built up on it. So I'm just picking it off with my fingernail. Those flash paints are pretty hard to get off of the tools. Okay, so this is going to be our last row. Large end of the green tool. And I'm going in between each dot from the previous row. And it's okay if these ones have a little bit of a gap in between. We will do some micro dots to fill those in. Again, just doing that tapping motion to build those out and make them bigger. And there are gaps in between here, but we'll do those little micro dots. I'll probably use gold for that. But I love the colors. I think that teal, I wasn't sure about it, but I think it gives it the contrast that we need that will really help the other colors pop. So let me just think real quick about <clears throat> what pattern I want to do. Um, let me think, let me think. I'm going to use the five and a half and the festive green. Let me just make sure the spacing is good. So I'm dotting on every vertical guide mark, but leaving a little gap in between for some swooshes. It's a little bit more of a gap than I would like, but We can either tap to get bigger dots or go up in size. So maybe I'll go up in size. I'm just gonna go to the other end, which is the size six. And I actually need a little bit more paint in my palette. I'm loving this color palette already. So we are just placing a dot on every vertical guide mark. I got another little drip. So these ones are significantly larger, so I'm just going to make these ones bigger while the paint is still wet. So just adding size onto these first ones because we went up in size on our tool. Okay. 
just wiping my tool off. And then, um, just thinking of what color. I'm gonna do some swooshes in between. I think either this metallic or sour apple will look good. I'm just kind of trying to, I think I want them a little lighter. So I'm gonna do the sour apple. And I'm just going to dot in between. And then I'm, so I'm dotting with the green stylus, the large end, and then flipping it over and using the small end to drag the sour apple is more runny. So I'm just praying that these don't run together because if they do, then we will need to wipe it up and fix it. So I'm going to get less paint on my tool for the next ones. Love that. Okay. Now I'm going to grab that size six dotting rod and I'm going to dot on every other swoosh and the dot is going to go above the swoosh, but also in between this guide mark and this guide mark. So we want it right in the center of that guide mark. And let me just think of the color. I'm going to use the teal, or not teal, jewel green. And I actually need to pour a little more of that. And I actually think that it's fine without mixing festive green in it. I think it's fine on its own. So we'll just use it on its own from now on. Okay, so size six dotting rod, and we are gonna go on every other swoosh. Okay, I'm gonna grab the gold. I'm really hoping the gold looks good. I'm so unsure about it. I'm taking the large end of the yellow stylus tool and just walking the dots and yes, yeah, the gold looks great. <laughs> While I have this gold out, I'm just going to go add those little micro dots. I actually want them to be a little bit bigger. I'm using the large end of the yellow tool. I want them to be a little bit bigger because there's kind of a big gap there. So I want to use bigger dots to fill it in nicely. So I'm just going in the gap. And that will tie in some more of the gold in the center, which I think is really pretty. I think that teal just really gives it more depth. It's not really teal, the jewel green. It is a little more blue. But I think it just gives it more 
contrast. For example, with the previous colors we did, so I did yellow and orange before this, I always like to have kind of a contrasting color when doing a monochromatic palette. So for the orange, I added a little bit of yellow, and for the yellow, I added a little bit of orange. So for green, I wanted to add just like a little bit of a different type of color. So in this case, it's more of a bluish, but it's still in the same range, so it fits. So that is looking great. Okay. We are going to, let's see. I'm going to take the lightest color, Jadeite, Jadeite Glass, and I'm going to dot at the tip. I'm using the large end of the green tool to dot right at the tip of each pattern we just made. And you can either walk the dots here or we can drag and swoosh. I'm going to just flip this tool over and use the small end of the green tool to walk the dots. Copper would look really good in this palette too. I just had that realization. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna do some brush strokes. I'm pretty sure I wanna do a double brush stroke. So I'm just getting a small brush, making sure it's nice and saturated. This is the five over zero. got some paint buildup in there so hopefully it's okay we're gonna try it and I'm gonna use the sour apple and I'm just getting a little bit of paint because we want these to be on the thinner side because we're gonna do two brush strokes around each petal and they're all gonna end on that same circular guide mark So I'm just kind of planning ahead and making sure that I can fit another brush stroke in this space. If for some reason you don't have enough space, you can just do thicker brush strokes and just do one set. So we're just filling in that space as best we can. Okay, just rinsing that brush off and then I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab the small end of the white tool and the gold and we are just going to walk the dots along the tip 
of each petal. I like doing these specifically when doing double brush strokes because I feel like it breaks up the brush strokes and gives a little barrier between them so they're not just blending together. And it just gives a nice little accent. Okay, now we're gonna do our second set of brush strokes. I'm using the same brush, five over zero. And I'm just doing a little practice. I'm going to do the festive green. And again, I'm not getting a ton of paint on the brush because we want these to be thin because we have to fit two in that gap right there. So these are definitely on the thinner side. Just rinsing off the brush. And I think I just want to build petal off petal. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you. Um, so I'm just going to start another petal just right in between each petal from the previous pattern. So I'm going to use the metallic and the size nine dotting rod. And we are just going to dot right in between. That tool might be a little big. Maybe eight and a half would be better. I'm just not pushing down all the way. If you don't like those little mounds, you can take a stylus tool and just smooth them out, but I'm going to leave them. I'm going to use the large end of the yellow stylus tool. And I'm just going to walk the dots. And we will do this around each green dot that we just made. Now, just to do something a little different, I'm going to take the large end of the blue tool and the jewel green, and I'm going to do three dots at the tip of each petal pattern that we just made. And you can use a brush or a stylus 
but we are just going to make some little swoops down. So starting at those three little dots and just doing this short little swoosh in that gap. This is the five over zero brush, same one. So just a small thin brush. Okay, and now we are going to do some brush strokes. I'm going to use the gold. Actually, let's think here. We'll try that. We'll do gold. I'm just using that same brush, five over zero. I'm gonna take the large end of the white tool and the lightest green, and we are going, going to do those walking the dots again. along the tip. And then for the next brush stroke, I'm gonna go up in size. I'm actually gonna use the rigor brush. So number one, long bristle. I want these ones to be thicker and I'm gonna use the flash paint and it's just a different consistency. It makes thinner, thinner brush strokes. So I need a thicker brush. So just adjust accordingly. So I want these ones to be nice and thick. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a mirror, a diamond mirror, and we are going to do some diamond shape here. So let's see, I want, I'm just always thinking ahead. We're gonna do some brush strokes around the diamond shape and I want them, I want the pattern to come up to this guide mark here. So I'm just leaving a little bit of space right here. So it's hard to like explain. I guess these brush strokes end about this guide mark. So I'm going up one guide mark and then doing it a little bit above this guide mark. So I just need to grab a pencil. And we also just want to make sure that the diamond 
is in between this guide mark and this guide mark. And we are just going to outline in between each petal. Okay, so now we have each diamond outline and now we are gonna do some brush strokes. So for the brush strokes, I'm gonna go in the gradient. I wanna start dark and go light. And I just want a medium brush. I'm gonna use this size one. It's one of those shorter brushes. It's not a long bristle, medium. Okay, so we're going to start with the jewel green. And we are just outlining the diamond shape. And I want all of these brush strokes to start below this guide mark here. That will keep them all the same length and then also just set us up for our next pattern. So I already know because I'm thinking ahead that I'll probably do a ring of dots between this guide mark and this guide mark going all the way around. So that's why for this pattern, I want the brush strokes to start below this guide mark. Because if they started on it or above, then we wouldn't have enough space here to do those, um, the ring of dots that we're gonna do. So just always think ahead at your next pattern and make sure that you're setting everything up nicely. We're now going to go to the next color, which is the festive green. I'm just going to pour a little bit more. And I'm just kind of practicing and seeing how much spacing. So festive green, same brush. We're just going to make these ones slightly shorter. We are now going to Sour Apple. <clears throat> Same brush. And we are just going to make these slightly shorter.
I really love how the gradient looks. So starting dark, going to light. Really glad we did that here because it makes them look like they're glowing. So now we're going to do the lightest. And I'm actually, let's see. I want to make one more color. I'm going to add a little bit. I'm adding the jadeite and the sour apple just to give this a little more color. It's almost white, that one, the jadeite, which is good for an accent, but for this last brush stroke, it's the largest and longest brush stroke. So whatever color it is, is really going to stand out in the um, design. So I'm actually going to add quite a bit more sour apple. I want it to be more of a light green and that will help keep that um, gradient going. Okay, I'm going to use that same brush. The size one. And just slightly shorter. Perfect color. And we are just squeezing into that gap. It's interesting, but the glorious gold next to all the green, it actually just has more of a copper look on its own, which is interesting. Okay, now I'm taking the gold and the large end. I actually need some more gold. Okay, so we're taking the large end of the green tool and we are going to be making some swooshes here. So basically just in between the petal patterns, we're going to bring it all the way down. And then I think I'll do, let's see. We might be able to squeeze one more in, but I'm gonna use a smaller tool. So for now, we'll just do the large end of the green tool, make a dot, and we're starting the swoosh up at this, at the bottom of this guide mark. So we're lining everything up, using the small end of the green tool to drag, and then dipping again, and just dotting slightly shorter and dragging. And we're gonna leave a little bit of space because we will probably add one more smaller swoosh right there.
Okay, so now I'm just using the small end of the green tool and just squeezing in one more swoosh. You can also use a smaller tool if it's easier to squeeze in that gap. All right, so now I'm going to take the festive green and the eight and a half dotting rod. And I'm just gonna do a ring of dots in between this guide mark and this guide mark. going all the way around. Okay, so we're just going to add in some little details. I'm going to do some of those walking the dots. I'm gonna start at the gold swoosh and walk them outward. I'm using the large end of the blue tool. And I'm just kind of walking them along the, there's a guide mark right there at the top that I'm just kind of following it along. And we will do that for each gold swoosh. Oops, those ones ran together a little bit, so I'm just grabbing a Q-tip. And I'm just wiping up that last dot. And, and we're just continuing on. Okay, so we still have a good amount of <clears throat> black space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the large end of the blue tool again and the sour apple. And I'm gonna start here. And I'm just walking the dots the opposite direction. So starting at this brush stroke and then walking the dots the opposite direction. So starting here and then walking towards the gold swooshes.
Next, I'm going to take the gold and the large end of the white stylus tool, and I'm going to place dots, I got a hair on my tool, in between each of the large dots from our ring. And I'm just going to do this all the way around the board. Okay, so for the corners, I'm going to do another diamond shape. So I'm putting it right along that guide mark. That was not the best outline, but that's okay. So I'm just putting it up against the row of green dots and then lining it up on this guide mark. And then outlining. Okay, now I'm going to take the large end of the blue tool and the lightest green and I'm going to walk the dots around or along the outer edge of the diamond shape that we just made. Okay, we're going to do some brush strokes next. I'm going to use the number one shorter bristle, medium size brush. And I'm going to start with the lightest or lighter green that we made. And I'm starting at the bottom. Coming up into a point, almost like a leaf shape. Filling in these corners has been fun. Just trying new shapes, patterns. Just rinsing that off. And now we're going to kind of go in that gradient. So we're going to go to the Sour apple, and I want to go up in size. I'm going to use the long brush, number one rigger brush, so longer bristle. start all the way at the tip of the board coming down
Now we're gonna go to the festive green. And these ones are shorter. So we're just kind of working off the space that we have. So I'm just bringing these up into that gap. Now we're gonna go to the jewel green. I'm just making these slightly shorter. I'm gonna switch to a shorter bristle brush. So I'm just gonna grab this number one. And we got to the end of our gradient. So now I think I'm gonna go back the other direction. So we ended here, now I'm gonna go to this one. Okay, we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna go to the sour apple now. And we're just bringing these all the way to the outside of the board, to the edge of the board. And that is how we are going to fill in that corner.
And now for the last one, I'm going to do the lightest, and I'm gonna really get a lot of paint on there. I want these ones to be nice and thick. And we're just extending it out. We're just really trying to fill in this corner. Nice and thick. So that filled in the corners pretty nicely. Now I'm going to take a dotting rod. Let me see. That's size five. Let's see. So I'm going to pour some more of the jewel green. I'm going to use the six and a half dotting rod. And I'm just placing a dot right in the gap on both sides right after that light green that we did. And then I'm going to grab a smaller tool. Let's see. Probably a stylus. So I just want to fill in this gap here. So I'm going to use the large end of the green stylus and I need more festive green. And I'm dotting right up against the um, outer edge of the board. I'm going to do another one, probably go down to the large end of the blue tool, and I'm still just going in that gradient order. Sour apple. And the dots are just getting smaller, and we're just filling in this gap here. And now I'm going to the large end of the white tool. Oh, wrong color. 
And then I'm gonna use the large end of the pink tool and the lightest color. And I'm just going to walk the dots all the way. There's a guide mark that goes right through the center of these patterns, so I'm just gonna walk it all the way along the outer edge of the board till they meet in the middle. Okay, and I'm just going to use the, I'll use this large end of the pink tool and the gold, and I'm just going to do some little dots just in between the first um, larger dots. We won't go all the way through all the small dots. So three sets. Okay, that looks awesome. Um, I do want to do some top dots. I think we can do some in the center here. I think some of those dots are dry now. So I think for these ones, I want to do a gradient. So it starts with these large ones start with festive green. So I want to do a sour apple and then the lightest one. So I'm going to do, I'm using the size 5 dotting rod. You just want a size that is smaller than these guys. And we are just dotting right on top. Okay, and now I want to do some gold top dots over these jewel green ones. Just thinking if I want a top dot there, I think I'll probably leave those ones, but I'm gonna do one more layer just to make them nice and raised. So I'm just using the five dotting rod and just doing more of the same, but I want a lot, so I'm getting a lot on my tool. Basically just layering these up to make them a little bit raised. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna let this dry for a bit and then we will come back and do our final layer of top dots and then we should be finished. Okay, this has now dried a little bit, so I'm just going to do some of those final touches. I want to do a light shade. My paint is a little bit dried out. I just need to mix it up to moisten it a bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this light tone and I'm going to do a light dot. I'm using the large end of the green tool. And then I'm going to take the light green that we mixed up and I'm just going to dot over the top of those gold dots that we did. Now what I'm trying to decide is if I like those gold dot or swooshes just as is. I feel like they're really, I don't know. I like the gold swooshes. I just feel like I want more green. So let me just think of what I want to do there. Let me try just one set of teeny tiny top brush strokes. I'm just going to do one and then I'll see if I like it or not. And what color? Let's see. I'm just looking from above. I would think either the lightest I'm trying to decide between these two for top. Maybe this one. Let's just try it. Yeah, I think I like that. So I'm going to do the top brush strokes over the gold. It's crazy to me how much this gold took on a copper color next to all this green. It really looks copper, but it's glorious gold. So I'm using a small brush. This is five over zero. And I'm just going right through the center of these gold swooshes so that the gold is still showing behind it but I just want to add, I just want it to be more green, less gold. But I still want some of that gold showing through. Okay, much better. And then, hmm, 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 hmm. I kind of want to do I like the blue, but it looks blue compared to all this. I think I'm going to do a top brush stroke with the Metallic. I'm just going to test one. It 
that pops a lot more. So I will go ahead with those just right through that jewel green. I think I just want to do the same on all of the jewel green. I like the jewel green, but it's definitely more teal, so I just want it to be a small accent. So I'm just going to use the flash metallic and just go over the Jewel green brush strokes. So that it's still showing through, but it's not like overbearing. I'm actually going to do the same on, I'm using the large end of the green tool and the metallic green, and I'm just going to top dot on these guys. And I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna take the large end of the white tool and the green, and I'm just going to top dot. Okay, that looks great. I'm really happy with it. So lastly, I'm just going to use the metallic green and I'm going to top dot all of those large dots. I will use the size seven. And I'm not pushing down all the way, I'm just making them slightly smaller. And we will do this all the way around. Okay. And I actually really like the mounds. I feel like it gives it some texture and dimension there. But we are pretty much done with this green, I love it. Okay, we are gonna let this dry. Then once it's dry, I'll come back and erase the guide marks. Then we'll varnish, add the mirrors, and then we're done. Okay, so everything is dry now. So I'm just going to take a Pampers wet wipe. And I'm actually I'm gonna grab a new one because those ones are out and pretty dry. Now that all of the guide marks are off, I'm going to take this outside and spray it with two coats of this Krylon Crystal Clear Spray Varnish. So I'll do one coat, let it dry for a couple minutes, then do another, and then we'll be done and we can glue in the mirrors. Okay, this has now been varnished and we are going to add the mirrors. So I have my mirrors here and I'm going to be using Gorilla Super Glue Gel. It's all crusty, so it's coming out 
all weird, but it's okay. Okay, and then just pull, oh, no. That just came out all liquidy, and it usually dries white when that happens, so I might have to cover it up with black paint. We will see how it comes up. It's not that bad. I don't know why the paint did that. It just came out liquidy. Kind of annoying. But that mirror covers it up. Oh, one more. So beautiful. I'm gonna let those just sit for a second. These ones might be good. I like to just take a microfiber cloth that mirror is just a little dirty Okay, and it's nice and sunny outside, so hopefully I can get some cool video and show you guys the final result. All right, and here is the final painting. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do me a favor, like this video, share it, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. All right, you guys, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.